Okay, standard disclaimer. I am not a machinist, gunsmith, or welder, so probably doing this bass backwards and completely wrong, so don't try this. Okay, today we're still working on the Paige Lewis Model D 1920s vintage uh, 22 rifle. Uh, today we're going to look at the bolt, which is basically the only other piece I have to do any sort of machining. The rest is just sort of cleaning and some wood repair, which I'm going to leave up to my brother. So, anyways, the two issues, two notable issues on the bolt is the first, if you look right here, uh, it might be kind of hard to see in the video, the lever is, there's a groove worn into it, so I'm afraid that the head space on the bolt when it's locked in is going to be slightly too large. So I'm going to try filling that with weld and machining it back down. And the other issue is if you sort of look at the bolt in this position, versus this position. In this position you have a gap here. This position you have a gap here which tells me the bolt is bent. Um, if you look at this, it's a two-piece bolt. So I'm pretty sure this bolt on the inside is, is bent and needs to be straightened. So start with, I'm just gonna dismantle this and then move on to cleaning parts. And I'll probably start with welding this since that's the more iffy operation if it's going to work out of the two. Um, neither neither piece seems that too bad to repair so first things first pull the firing pin out take the knob off and now we gotta unscrew this which means I need another pair of pliers There you have all the major pieces. Like with a lot of things I do, the first thing I do is go take these, throw them in the part washer and get all the dirt and grime off of them. Yeah, if you watch the tip of this as I roll it back and forth, you can see how it's out of center. So I think the easiest solution for this one is I'm just going to make a block it can screw into put a straight edge up against to it, heat it up, and try and bend it back. If that doesn't work, I'll just make a new one. So, off to the cleaning tank. And we're back at our fancy dancy cleaning tank. And got this little tray just so I don't lose anything in the bottom. Been there, done that. Sucks majorly to come back out. So, I'm basically just gonna clean all the grease and grime off of them and See what we got. Yes, my fluid needs to be changed. I'll do it in the spring. It's just too cold to deal with. Okay, so there's the first piece to me. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I'll take some pictures and try to insert them, but there's quite an uneven groove here. It's fully round on this side, flat on this side like it was machined that way, and then sort of just slopes right in and deeply cut in the middle. So that's going to take some uh, finagling to get fixed. The other question I have is this is bent, and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be that way or not. Looking at it, I don't have any stress fractures or stress wrinkles, I guess you'd call them. So I, I think this is the way that it came from the factory, but I'll have to do some checking online and see if I can find some official pictures of the gun. You know, other than the one I that I have here, I've never seen another one of these. So it looks like it's supposed to be this way, but some other damage on this gun, it could just be, you know, it was abused to beyond and bent on its own and... Well, that's just the way that they left it and used it. So we'll go from there. Spring, not much to clean here. I'm just going to 
sort of scrub her off real quick and call it good. And the one thing I did notice on the spring is this end's cut looks to be a cut off where this end, you know, it has a nice finished closed coil on it. So I'm wondering if the spring was shortened at some point, you know, maybe just so a smaller child could pull it back and cock it. As long as it fires around, it really makes no difference to me. So if it works, I'm going to leave it. If not, I'll have to find a new spring. Here's the wonderful bolt that is bent. Clean up as much goop off of it as I can. You know, and you can, you know, if you watch my finger here and as I run it across, you can just see all the pent up grease and uh, gunpowder residue on it coming off as I brush things off. Yeah, and just turning in my fingers, you can see that point just sort of wobbling up and down. But we'll call this good for now. Really want to make sure I get all the goop out of this guy. There was quite a bit of stuff packed in it. While I have all these apart, I'll probably throw them in the lathe and just polish up the outsides real quick. It's a lot easier to do that way than it is to do them by hand. And with that, we'll call them clean. Okay, the next part I'm going to work on is the bolt lever. And I don't know if you can make this out, but there's a major divot right there from where it was wearing into it. The first thing I'm going to do is take a couple measurements off it. So once I'm done welding, I can get it back to the same shape. At the top right here, they're what looks like to be original machined flat, which is 0.339. So I'm going to call that 0.34. Overall dimension. 0.350. Shouldn't have to redo the width, but just interesting to note that it's all seems to be English units, which is not totally surprising seeing the age of this gun. Uh, other things on here, got a little bit of goop there, a little bit of goop on the ball that I'm going to try and hand sand out just to clean this thing up best I can. That's really interesting, it's only on the one surface. Sure, the guy's face may look like a catcher's mitt, but he can still do Christmas tunes. Paul McCartney's on KROC and keeping the music style between on Christmas. So, next up, head to the garage and try and fill this little divot with weld. That should be fun and interesting. Oh, it's cold. Uh, nothing like December in Minnesota. So anyways, this time I'm going to do a little preheating on this. 
So hopefully it'll be a little easier weld this time around, or at least get the weld started. Uh, I'm not looking to get this cherry red at this point, just sort of reasonable preheat. That looks good. Grab some gloves. And we'll see if any of this comes out on the video. I'm kind of guessing it probably won't. And that should do me. I hope. quite a bit to machine off, but that was expected. I can tell it's welded all the way around to at least the diameter of the part. I might have a little bit of uh, curving on the inside but deal with that when we come to that part. Also some of this piece will be uh, machined flat right in that location so it may not be significant whatsoever. Okay set up a quick little furnace here, our pseudo furnace. Get this guy up to Okay, here we have it, dull cherry red. Now let's get this thing all closed in. Oops. Well, I'll have to reheat it again. Oh, son of a... Never have enough hands. Okay. Okay, nice and hot. Close it up, let it sit. Okay, gonna let that guy sit for half hour, hour, let it cool slowly, or at least as slowly as I can get it to cool in these conditions. And then come get it, clean her up, throw it on the lathe.